Hello friends. Today, we're going to consider a profound question. Who is God? To those who rely on human wisdom alone, God is a mystery. Simply an idea they argue against. However, God in His love and compassion graciously reveals Himself to those who, through the eyes of faith, are willing to see. There are two primary ways in which God reveals Himself. The first is through creation. In Psalm 19 verses 1 to 3, David declares the following, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. For those who are willing to see, the Creator's hand is visible throughout nature. From the stars in the heavens to the creatures of the deepest sea, His amazing design can be clearly seen. The second way He reveals Himself is through Scripture. And it is through Scripture where God's supreme revelation is seen through the life and death of Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, we can know the Father. We read in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, The Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true. And Jesus Himself said, This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. When we seek to know God from the Bible, we can't place ourselves above God and treat Him as an object to be studied, analyzed, and quantified. We must submit to the authority of His self-revelation, the Bible. And the Bible is its own interpreter as we compare Scripture with Scripture. It's important to keep in mind that the Bible does not prove God's existence. It assumes it, as indicated in its opening. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. One of the ways the Bible reveals God is through His names recorded there. Holy and awesome is His name, we read in Psalm 111, verse 9. In the Old Testament, written in Hebrew, we read many names that help us understand who He is. El and Elohim meet God and reveal His divine power. El Elon means God Most High and Adonai means Lord or Master. The name El Shaddai means God Almighty, and the name Yahweh stresses God's self-existent nature and His faithfulness. In the New Testament, Jesus uses the name Father to bring us into a closer personal relationship with God. The activities of God also give us a glimpse into who He is. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, we see Him upholding all things by the word of His power. And in many passages, we see Him as our Redeemer, Isaiah 46, 11, and Jeremiah 20, 29, 11. They remind us that God makes plans, and according to Isaiah 46, 10, he declares the end from the beginning. He blesses his people as revealed in Deuteronomy 15, verse 6, and is faithful and just to forgive sins when we confess them to him as promised in 1 John 1, 9. Perhaps one of the most revealing texts in Scripture is found in Exodus 34, verses 6 through 10. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sins, by no means clearing the guilty. 
Our God is a God of mercy and ultimate justice. God is self-existent, for he has life in himself, as we read in John 5, 26. He is all-powerful and omniscient, knowing the end from the beginning as the Alpha and Omega, recorded in Revelation 1, 8. God is omnipresent, transcending space and time, and yet he is fully present everywhere and at all times, as indicated in Psalm 139, verse 7, and Hebrews 4, verse 13. God is all-powerful, and nothing is impossible with him. He is unchangeable and perfect. I am the Lord, I do not change, he says in Malachi 3, 6. Scripture reveals while there is only one God, there is a plurality within the Godhead. In fact, our second Seventh-day Adventist fundamental belief states, there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons. God is immortal, all-powerful, all-knowing, above all, and ever-present. He is infinite and beyond human comprehension, yet known through his self-revelation. God, who is love, is forever worthy of worship, adoration, and service by the whole creation. Now let's take a brief look at what Scripture says about the Godhead. In the book of Genesis, we hear God referring to himself in the plural several times. In Genesis 1.26, God declares, let us make man in our image. Genesis 3.22, he says, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And in Genesis 11.7, we hear God saying, Come, let us go down. Some references refer specifically to the Holy Spirit, such as in the creation story where we read in Genesis 1.2, the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And in Isaiah 48, verse 16, we see the three persons of the Godhead where we read, And now the Lord God, the Father, and His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, have sent me, the Son of God. The incarnation of Jesus Christ is a beautiful example of how the three members of the Godhead work closely together. The Father gave His Son. Christ gave Himself. And the Spirit gave Jesus' birth. Each member of the Godhead was present at the baptism of Jesus, with the Father stating, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Christ giving Himself to be baptized as our example and the Spirit empowering Jesus as he descended upon him in the form of a dove. Shortly before his death, Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit as a helper, and he commanded his church to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Today, the Father and the Son reach out to us through the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, he will testify of me. And in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14, we have the beautiful blessing, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You know, friends, Water is an interesting substance. It can cascade down thundering waterfalls, filling lakes and rivers that flow into the mighty sea. It can be frozen solid, turning into ice that covers the poles of the earth. And it can rise as a vapor, icy cold or steaming hot. Three forms, liquid, 
solid and vapor, and yet all are one substance, water. Perhaps God is a, a bit like that. We can't specifically indicate everything about God, absolutely sure, but perhaps he is a bit like this. One God, yet three distinct persons with unique characteristics and roles, all working together to save as many as possible for eternity. Ellen White tells us, there are three living persons of the heavenly trio. In the name of these three great powers, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, those who receive Christ by living faith are baptized, and these powers will cooperate with the obedient subjects of heaven in their efforts to live the new life in Christ. What a beautiful promise this is. If you would like to learn more about who God is, you will find many helpful resources at adventist.org slash beliefs. What a comfort it is to know that there truly is a God in heaven who loves us, who died for us, who comforts and guides us, and who is one day very soon coming again to take us to live forever with him. Let's thank him right now. Father in heaven, thank you for the marvelous way in which you work so closely with Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as the Godhead, three in one. We can't understand that. It's beyond our comprehension, but we accept it by faith. And we thank you for this marvelous opportunity of allowing you to live in our hearts and to help us to share with others the magnificent news that you have made a way of escape for each of us. And that this wonderful plan of salvation was provided by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, even before the creation of this world. Thank you for being our God. We ask all of this in the powerful and wonderful name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.